Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a good story. It will grip you and have you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to tune in episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time that they are introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. With that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we will only be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea and therefore are unaffected by those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And before we start, I want to thank you all for supporting this channel. If you want to see these videos weeks before they are ever released here on YouTube, then consider supporting this channel on Patreon. You can also vote for which survivors I tell the stories of, like this one, and even get an exclusive Patreon-only video each month about the topic of your choosing. Thank you for your support. 39 days, 16 people, one survivor. Jenna Maraska, a 21-year-old swimsuit model, was the winner of Survivor's sixth season, Survivor the Amazon, and when she won, even Jeff Probst was amazed and surprised by the end result. So how did she pull it off? Let's find out. Survivor the Amazon does something Survivor Thailand simply teased. They split up the tribes by male and female. When Jeff called the fifth girl, I knew it like instantly. This is an all-woman tribe. It's an all-chick thing. We can let our hair down. We can pee in front of each other. Jenna obviously joins the women's tribe, Jabaru. But it seems like the men can't contain their excitement over this, as they think it will be a cakewalk to beat the women at every challenge. It's going to be the men against the women. But they don't have the strength. They may have the will. But, you know, and this is a forbidden place. It's pathetic. All the guys were really pumped up. There is no way that women are gonna beat us in anything. This causes Jenna to get real annoyed and she lays out her game plan and what she thinks about all of this. They're so freaking cocky. Oh, we're never gonna go to tribal council and uh, it's just so annoying. I just wanna beat them to just kind of like shut them up. But not only is Jenna annoyed by the men's trash talk, she is annoyed by this tribe split in general as she feels like it doesn't help her at all. If you're in a tribe with all women, you can't use any of your womanly powers on women, they could care less. With men, it's just, you can manipulate them better. Upon arriving at the Jabaru camp, one of Jenna's tribe mates, Christy, drops a bombshell. I, it's not a big deal, but I think it's something that every tribe member should know, and I wanna try my best to keep it from the other tribe members, but I am deaf. For the first time in Survivor history, there's a deaf castaway, and it's Christy. She can read lips, and she can hear some of what they're saying out of one ear thanks to a hearing aid, but in general, everyone will need to be more considerate of her needing to see their lips when talking to her. Jenna tells us that she isn't too sure about all of this. I'm just wondering how she's gonna be able to work with a group when she can't really hear well. I don't know how it's gonna work out, I really don't. Which is of course a genuine feeling that she is expressing, but it comes across as negative and lacks a spirit of caring about someone other than herself. While the men have been hard at work building a functional shelter, the women have been very lackadaisical and unfocused when it comes to building theirs. So unfocused that Jenna and some other girls are taking the time to boil and wash their clothes instead of help build. We boiled our buffs, we boiled underwear that wasn't clean. Underwear needs to be clean, is, I figure, I think is a priority because of things can live on you. The women win immunity and are safe from that night's vote. Back at the camp, the women are ragging on the men who did all that trash talking about, oh, we're never gonna lose any challenge. Put the trees up, they're like, put the trees up. <laughs> <laughs> Do the letters first. <laughs> I'm was, like, wait a second, is there an echo in the jungle? I'm so far with Jenna, we have seen someone who comes across as selfish with a negative attitude and had a mini arc within the episode of wanting to shut the men up and then promptly doing so. However, it does seem like she is in good with her tribe mates and no one has spoken ill about her yet. 
so she must be doing something right. The real question is, will all of this carry over for the whole season, or will her selfishness catch up to her and bite her in the butt, causing her to either need to adapt or die? Now we don't hear much from Jenna in many of these episodes, but in episode two, what we do see is how Christy Smith is being ignored a lot and no one seems to be trying to include her in their day-to-day -day activities. Christy even tells us that it has now been five days and Jenna hasn't said a single word to her. I feel totally excluded. I mean, Jenna hasn't even said a word to me this whole five days. The women lose immunity, and at Tribal Council, Christy expresses how she feels like she's just being excluded. And Jeff asks Jenna, what are her thoughts on this? What do you think about the notion that Christy is being excluded? Jenna essentially says that what Christy is saying is ridiculous and that, and that no one's excluding her. However, this is not true, and we have seen this to be not true, especially when it comes to Jenna, since Christy has said that she's never even spoken to her, and even we have seen how she hasn't spoken her. Do you feel excluded? Yes. Do you think it has to do with that you're deaf? Yes. I think that's also ridiculous. It's not, it, it, we don't exclude anybody. We're women living together in the jungle trying to survive. Jenna ends up voting with the majority for Janet, who goes home in a five to one to one to one vote. Janet, Travis spoken. However, one of those stray votes was for Jenna from Christy. Moving on to episode three, the women are bathing in the river, but they seem to be split on who they're doing it with. It's not the entire tribe bathing at once. Christy is with Dina and Jean, who believe that the others won't bathe with them since they are older, even though Christy is only three years older than Jenna. But as it turns out, Heidi explains that actually they're split up based on looks and the other women are just jealous of her, Shauna, and Jenna. The cuter girls kind of went off from the older women because we're younger and we're cuter, we've got better bodies, and for some reason that's like a huge issue with older people. Episode 4 continues the storyline of Jenna being self-absorbed and vain when Joanna is talking about her faith and how a good work ethic really means a lot. There's always sweet rewards at the end of anything worth having is worth working hard for. You can't just expect stuff to come drop in your lap. The work ethic in our camp is definitely creating friction. You've got bigger women that have more fat to live on that obviously can put out more effort. Heidi and Jenna then both point out how Joanna is jealous of how hot they are and they just can't help being this hot. Beauty is deceitful and favor is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. Don't be mad because we have good bodies. It's not our fault, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> the women lose immunity, and Jenna's friend Shauna has been feeling down, so some of the members of Jabaru are considering voting her off since she's basically a liability to them. I will be voting off Shauna. She's been weak, and uh, we need all the strength we can get. However, Jenna doesn't want her gone, so she gets to work on saving her and realizes that Chrissy is the key to all of this. She thinks she's the swing vote. She recognized her as a wild card and needs to convince her to make this plan of saving Shauna happen. It's important for me and Dina and Heidi to get Christy to vote on our side, and if we let her out now, there's a possibility of of us not being able to have the majority. At Tribal Council, Christy does vote with Jenna, so it was a successful move getting her to flip, and Shauna is saved, eliminating Joanna in a four to two to one vote. Joanna, the tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. However, weirdly, Shauna voted for Christy, which is that stray one vote. Had she just voted with Jenna and Christy didn't flip, Joanna still would have left four to three. So it is strange why Christy seems so valuable in saving Shauna, but Shauna didn't even really try to save herself. It is episode five and there is a new twist. Survivor wants the youngest man and the youngest woman to meet up and just hang out for a night, no strings attached. Prepare to have a little fun, unfortunately, for only one. Send your youngest for wine and laughter. And it said only one person can go and send your youngest. And immediately it was like, oh, I'm the youngest. So I'm gonna have to do something by myself. Not suspecting that there's anything more to this, Dave and Jenna get to talking and she tells him everything, having true diary of the mouth, similar to Xi'an in Thailand when she was talking to Clay Jordan. We don't do a lot of talking, and I try to tell the girls, I'm like, you know what, we should do this, like talk like every day just to be real. Jenna did go into great detail about the status of her tribe. However, you gotta think, do you want to be revealing all this? Shona approached Dina, 
there's us, our four against three. The next morning, Jeff drops a bomb on them. Surprise, surprise, they will be drafting brand new tribes. We're gonna have a little draft, and you two are in charge of picking new tribes. They can only pick two people of the same gender as them, and they have to pick three people of the opposite gender. Dave ends up stealing Jenna's best friend Heidi with his first pick, and this is after Jenna tells him that he can have the first pick. Jenna had talked a lot about her alliance with Heidi and how strong Heidi was. So, Heidi, first member of Tomba Key. Sorry. So Jenna ends up picking Rob, Alex, and Matthew while keeping Dina and Shauna. When she arrives back at camp to give the news of the tribe swap, we see how Dave completely botched this when he went back to the men's tribe and causes Rob to get mad at him. I was very mad when I found out that my fate in this game would be determined by Dave. I don't think he has my best interests at heart. However, Jenna does this much better and clearly communicates why she wasn't able to keep everyone. Heidi seems to understand. So, I mean, it was kind of like, oh man, that really stinks. I love you. I love you. The new Jabru tribe wins immunity, so we move on to episode six, where there is a fun reward challenge. A member from each tribe must face off against each other on a rolling log, and whoever falls off first loses. This requires strength, coordination, and even some strategic thinking. Jenna faces off against Christy for the first time, and... Jenna in the water first! She loses. But that is okay, as everything gets tied up, and it comes down to sudden death. Whoever wins the next point wins the reward for their tribe, and whoever loses does the same, their tribe loses reward. Once again, it comes down to Jenna and Christy and... Jenna loses again, this time being the reason her tribe loses the reward. They also lose immunity, and despite Shauna seeming better ever since the arrival of the men at their camp, she has gone from laying around feeling ill to laying around and cuddling and flirting with Alex all day. It isn't liked at all by Rob and he wants to split them up. Everyone except Shauna and Alex vote for Shauna and she is eliminated four to two. Shauna, the tribe has spoken. Unless this is Survivor Thailand, episode seven means it's time for the merge. But before that, Rob has a crazy idea that he throws out to his Jabru tribe mates. Of them being a new alliance and they can blindside Butch, Roger, and Dave of the new Tombaki tribe, which is Rob's old tribe mates. Everyone is on board with this, including Jenna. The two tribes finally merge and become Jacare. Jabru and Tombaki are no more. New buffs, new tribe color. At the new camp, Roger is getting on everyone's nerves, but Dina thinks that they should target Dave since he's younger and more fit. Heidi and Jenna convince Dina that actually, hold on a second there, Roger's a bigger target since if he gets on the jury, they suspect he won't vote for a woman. So let's say that Heidi and Rob are sitting at the end, he's gonna vote for Rob because he's a man. But Roger has gotta go first because what will happen is if he gets on the jury mm -hmm. and then say, just me or you, okay, any of the girls, I guess. he will vote against us. Um, so they say that now is their last shot to get rid of Roger to eliminate him so he doesn't end up on the jury. Dina ends up agreeing with them. Jenna and Heidi had a good point. If we were to allow Roger to be on the jury, he would never ever vote for a female. At the immunity challenge, it is a classic making its return from Survivor, the Australian Outback. All the castaways have to do is stand on a perch for longer than anyone else. However, along the way, Jeff brings out food to tempt the castaways with to drop down. Not too long into the challenge, Jen and Heidi tell Jeff that if you bring out chocolate and peanut butter, we will get naked. I take my clothes out for chocolate and peanut butter. Get the girls some chocolate and peanut butter probes. If you have coal, I'm so in. He brings exactly what they ask for, and sure enough, they get naked. It's all played off as very fun and lighthearted. Mmm, peanut butter! Mm. Hey, Jenna, how is it? Oh, God, you guys Hi. have no idea. Roger doesn't win immunity, and it seems like he is clearly going home. Back at camp, Jenna and Heidi tell us that they're the original Girls Gone Wild of Survivor. We are definitely the original yeah. Survivor Girls Gone Wild. There's definitely. no doubt about it. Really? What makes it even more funny is the guys think that they're slowly picking us yes. off. Yes, yes. At Tribal Council, Roger is successfully voted off seven to three, with Jenna being on the right side of the numbers. Roger, the tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go.
Episode 8 brings with it Jenna's first immunity win. Nice job, Jenna. Good job. Yeah. At Tribal Council, the plan of voting out the men of the new Tomiki is in full force as Dave is voted out unanimously 8 to 1, leaving only Butch left in those original three that Rob said they should get rid of. Dave, the tribe has spoken. Episode 9 slides in with a reward challenge that Alex wins, and Jeff tells him, hey, you get to pick one person to go with you on the reward, and he picks Jenna. Hey. One friend. So, Jenna, let's go have some coffee. Jenna gets her win. <laughs> with the exception of Christy, it seems like everyone gets along with Jenna, despite how self-absorbed and vain she comes across to us. Time and time again, people talk to her and don't want to target her, which tells us that she must be playing a good social game, but it seems like this is being hidden from us a lot, and this cannot be made more apparent so far than seeing Alex pick Jenna to go on this reward over someone like Rob, who we've actually seen Alex bond with this season. The only close relationship we have seen Jenna have is with Heidi. Jenna and Alex return from the reward, and Heidi fills Jenna in on a plan that Dina came up with while they were gone to blindside Alex. Alex and Jenna were my original lions. I'm not gonna turn my back on them. So, I mean, I just told Jenna about it, and I knew she'd speak to Alex about it. Jenna then tells Alex what she found out and says that Dina's trouble and is stabbing them in the back. This shows that Jenna is trouble and is building trust by telling her Alliance members vital information, and of course, they believe her. He turned on us, so we need to get her off after Matt. How did Heidi find this out? Jockery receives a clue to their next immunity challenge, which clearly seems like it is probably a gross food challenge or something else involving food, considering that it's the clue is on a plate and the plate has utensils on it. For some reason, we hear Jenna say, I put your palate in the, in the move. What's that mean? That I don't understand. Oh wait, no. No. I don't know. I'm confused. Maybe I'm just an idiot. Now it's clear from this that we are supposed to believe that Jenna is really dumb. Why else would we be shown it? What's that mean? That I don't understand. Oh wait, no. No. I don't know. I'm confused. Maybe I'm just an idiot. Dina is now Jenna's target and Dina loses immunity, making her vulnerable. Back at camp, Dina says Alex has to go next and thinks that Jenna is completely on board with her. Okay. That's understandable, because when I convinced Jenna, Alex is too great of a threat. But she stabbed us all in the back, and I am so incredibly disappointed and shocked, and I can't ever forgive that. Jenna then talks to Alex and tells her what Dina just said to her, and says that Dina thinks she has Rob and Matt wrapped around her finger. She just wants all the, girl, all the guys going first. She told me, quote, we control the escape. I was like, hmm, you said that to everybody. Mm -hmm. However, at Tribal Council, Dina is successfully voted out 6-2 to two with only Christy voting with her, not Rob and Matt like she thought she had. You lied to me, you betrayed me, you screwed me, I'll screw you. Dina, the tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Episode 10 is a recap episode that doesn't affect the overall narrative of the season, so we move on to episode 11, where it starts off with Alex telling us how he considers Jenna to be a best friend. I mean, I knew that I would meet cool people. I never thought that I would meet people that I consider friends that I want to continue to be friends with. We then learn that Jenna's mom is sick with cancer, and with every passing day, she gets more and more worried about her. Jenna's mom is sick. She has cancer. She does say that she has these new friends around and they help her take her mind off of thinking about her mom every day. Though this is the first time all season in episode 11 that we're hearing about her mom having cancer. I think about them often, but it's nice to have a core group of people that I love here also. That's also made me not have to think about them as often. This is then followed up by seeing her, Heidi, Alex, and Rob all laying around doing nothing while Christy, Matt, and Butch are working hard. Alex explains that they have the luxury of doing this since they're in the majority. But it's a little bit like high school. Jenna and Heidi, Rob and I have the luxury of doing a little less work because we hold a majority and the other three know it. The reward challenge comes and it is the survivor auction. Jeff offers up one letter for sale and Christy ends up winning it for $340, outbidding Jenna who only had 300 after spending some on food. 340 to Christy, once, twice, sold. Come get your letter from home. 
She ends up having a breakdown about this and Jeff surprisingly offers a second letter if Christy agrees, which she does. 120 to Jenna. Once, twice, sold to Jenna. Letter from home. Jenna ends up winning the letter and back at camp, we hear from Matt, out of all people, about how Christy deserved her letter and Jenna was selfish for getting hers. It's weird that we're being shown this since it seems like Jenna getting her letter should be a good thing, but hearing this from Matt paints Jenna as a villain. I realized that it would really elevate her spirits, raise her spirits. And I felt she deserved it. I thought Jenna was being selfish. However, Jenna does read her letter and it seemingly gives her good news about her mom and she shows genuine emotion and care for her. It's shrunk, her tumor shrunk 50%. Nice. Someone's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so before Tribal, while Jenna is sleeping, Alex tells Rob that once him, Rob, Heidi, and Jenna reach Final Four, then hey, I'm voting you off, Rob. And Rob doesn't like this at all and joins the other three in an attempt to vote off Alex, meaning he joins Butch, Matt, and Christy. I think it has to do with this idea that we're all each other's best friends. And even though I'm going to be voted out fourth, I'm losing to three worthy players. At Tribal Council, this is exactly what happens as Jenna is blindsided and Alex is gone in a four to three vote. Alex, tribe has spoken. Take it easy, guys. Good luck. Good luck, dude. Moving into episode 12, Matt wins the family reward challenge and Jeff gives him the option of you can have a reward for yourself or you can give it to everyone else and he decides to let everyone else see their loved one. Jen is once again shown caring very much, this time for her dad. <laughs> Back at camp, Rob isn't feeling too great about Matt going to the end with him. He thinks Matt actually might have a better chance now that he just gave everyone the family reward. And he thinks Jenna might be the better option. So he talks to her and pitches her a final two deal while letting her know that the reason he's doing this is because he thinks he can beat her at the end. Pal, it's gonna be me and you in, in the final two. <laughs> I think that you've robbed a lot of people the, the wrong way in this game, I think the person that I could stand the best chance at the end of the game with is you. Once again, we see how her social game is good enough that someone who has been shown to be really smart is willing to offer her a final two deal, even if it is for the wrong reasons. But unluckily for Rob, Jenna is disgusted by Rob's behavior and his offer, and she really hates how he blindsided her the night before with Alex. He's a snake. Everybody's gonna know that, and he, it's embarrassing. I would be embarrassed to know him because he's such a slime ball. He says he hopes she doesn't go off running and telling the others about this deal, but that is exactly what she does when she tells Heidi and they both blow up on Rob, while the rest of the tribe seemingly don't really agree with what they're saying. This is a risky move and it seems very much driven by emotion as Jenna feels betrayed by Rob for voting on Alex, even though she thought Rob was a good friend of hers. Have you told everybody else that you wanted to take me to the end because I'm the only one you can beat? No, you haven't. Rob even has the gall to call out Jenna and says if she has an issue with him, then he has the solution. If you do not like the way I play this game, please feel free to write R-O-B on your parchment tomorrow night. Later on, realizing they are down four to two going into tribal, Heidi and Jenna work on flipping Christy and have her agree to a final three deal. Now Christy isn't buying it though, as she says they're just simply kissing up to her since all season they've been ignoring her and now they want something, so they're being nice. Heidi and Jenna, they, do kiss my ass, but they just want something from me. So why would I want to give them something if Heidi and Jenna hasn't done anything in return? At the immunity challenge, Jenna wins for a second time, ensuring her safety. You are safe from the vote tonight. You cannot be voted out. At tribal council, Jenna explains that her and Heidi have to work twice as hard to overcome the opinions people form of them because they are beautiful women. You're a stupid model. You can't hack it. So I've felt like I've had to work twice as hard to get here and I think Heidi feels the same. Rob then says that he's lucky he isn't handicapped like Jenna and Heidi. I was lucky in this game that I'm not handsome, so I didn't have any uh, handicaps like the girls found. Now Jenna never said that she was handicapped because of her beauty. She was saying that there's a stereotype that she has to overcome. However, this is overall a tone deaf look by Jenna to be saying right in front of Christy. It is then time to vote and inexplicably, she gives her necklace to Heidi. I'd like to give it to Heidi. Strategy, that's all I can say. 
which is a weird move as for some reason Jenna thinks that if Heidi has the necklace, then the votes that were going to go Heidi's way will go someone else's way. But Rob did promise before Tribal to vote with them for Christy since she has been flaky with them, but they can't really trust him at this point since he just blindsided them. I'd, I'd like to give it to Heidi. Strategy, that's all I can say. However, it all does end up working out as Rob stays true to his word and Christy goes home four to two. Christy, the tribe has spoken. Things between Jenna and Rob have greatly improved as episode 13 starts. She says that since he kept his word and eliminated Christy over Heidi, however, Rob then says to her in Heidi's face how he is voting them both out next and they both act completely okay with this. Basically, this is what I'm thinking. Heidi, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna vote, vote for you next. Okay. And then, and then Jenna, but you know that, okay. that. We then learn how Butch is just a wood crazy nut, which has been hinted at since the premiere. Bucky? Covered in wood with this. Jenna doesn't understand why they need so much wood and why Butch spends all day gathering it and why he has roped Rob into doing it with him. She even suspects that he may be conversing with the dry wood directly. It's under the shelter, it's by the fire. I mean, we have huge logs in our shelter we're not using anymore. I don't know what he does. I don't know if he talks to the wood. Oh man, this is nice. I'm just a wood crazy nut, I guess. While at the reward challenge, we see how the overabundance of wo dry wood comes back to haunt them as their fire shelter catches on fire and uses all the dry wood they gathered to spread and burn down their shelter. Back at camp, the men are rebuilding the shelter while Heidi and Jenna purposely sit around and don't help. Jenna claims that this is out of spite since they're going to be voted out next. Why should they help them? We're not doing any work for them. Why? You're going to vote us off? I'm not doing crap for you. I'm making your life easier. I said to Jenna, you know, I feel bad for not helping them. And then I go, nah, I really don't. This is not a move that helps her chances of garnering favor. Matt wins immunity and what happens next is not an intentional move on Jenna's part as it was hinted back at the reward challenge but Jenna is feeling ill and the timing could not be better for her actually, as her or Heidi are supposed to be voted off next and this truly lowers her threat level. I can't do this anymore, I feel like crap. I hate every minute of being here. How am I supposed to enjoy my last couple days here when I can't even do anything? Heidi then smartly starts campaigning for Jenna to be voted out to Rob, but he doesn't seem to care too much at first. He does say that if you're willing to put your head on the chopping block, then he's willing to lop it off. And Jenna is clearly in pain, and there isn't much she can do about this. I don't understand what she is. She is. But it's only one day more. Oh, it's I, not like, exactly. It's only like, one day. So I don't understand why it matters. At Tribal, Jenna says that she would rather face someone who deserves to be in the final two, rather than someone she thinks she can just simply be. It isn't clear if she's lying or if she truly thinks this, as we've never heard from her at any earlier point say anything about this. So we'll take her at face value here. I would rather go up against somebody who I really care about and I know was a great player and that be it. Like, I wouldn't want to go up against somebody I knew I could beat. Heidi goes home three to two and it was clear that they both knew that this was a high likelihood of happening. So Jenna voting with Heidi is smart as it shows loyalty to Heidi on her way out the door and none of the men will knock her for voting with her friend. Heidi, the tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. Finale time. It is Jenna versus Rob versus Matt versus Butch. And as of now, it seems like Jenna is the next to go and she will either need to cut some deals or win immunity to make it to the final two. It all begins with Jenna saying she is thankful to be here, but is very aware that she's probably gone next. As of now, I'm glad to be here. Even though tomorrow I'll be saying goodbye yep. very happily. This is substantiated when Butch tells us that him, Rob, and Matt have an alliance and they plan on voting out Jenna next and they just got rid of Heidi because she was the bigger threat. But Matt, Rob, and myself have formed a very strong alliance and we felt that Heidi would have been the biggest threat. However, at the immunity challenge, Jenna pulls an upset and wins her third immunity of the season. Very valuable. Immunity necklace. I have no idea. He's yours. Now the men are scrambling, and it's mostly Rob, who seems to be very rattled by what just happened and thinks he may be gone next. Butch goes up to Jenna and says, however you want to vote, I will vote with you. And she says, let's vote out Rob, and Butch agrees. Well, who would you like to see go? Because I'm going to have, you know, I'm asking you for your help. Well, probably the person who dogged me. 
I rob. If you would stand by that, I would uh, I would really no, appreciate no, it. No, that's what I that's what we're right now. Matt then approaches her and says that instead of voting out Rob, why not vote out Butch? Rob is screwed over so many people and he's less of a threat. Jenna also comments how Butch hasn't really done anything to get to this point in the game, but once again she agrees with Matt for his plan. Now she has two deals in place. The question is, which one will she go with? Matt comes up to me and said that, you know, I promise you that I will take you to the final two if I win immunity. People could still you know, lie. At Tribal, she does vote for Butch, leaving Rob in the game. Butch, the tribe has spoken. Now this move can be seen as questionable depending on your viewpoint. Rob has played a great game, but has burnt a lot of bridges along the way, so maybe he is an easy beat at Final Tribal. However, Butch has been shown to be a non-factor in pretty much every strategic move of the season, so he seems like he should be easily beat at Final Tribal as well, but maybe the jury will value someone who is such a non-factor in their vote outs higher than someone who burnt a lot of bridges. All in all, this does back up her claim that she wants to face the best at the end. Later on, Jenna says that she isn't sure who she could beat in the final two since she doesn't know what the jury is thinking. She says maybe Rob is easier since he has burnt bridges, but she isn't sure and she isn't stressing about it either. I don't know who I could beat in the final two. I don't know what the jury's thinking but it's out of my hands after the immunity challenge, so I'm not gonna stress over it. The final three immunity challenge takes place at Tribal, and this one is an endurance competition. The castaways have to stand on a perch while keeping a headdress above their head. Matt drops it very early, which seems unusual because Almost all season he's been dominating competitions aside from the ones that Jenna has won, but it ends up coming down to Jenna and Rob, and Rob attempts to offer her a final two deal, saying that if she drops, then he will take her to the end. Jenna, you wanna make a deal? <sighs> Jenna, step down, I'll take you. No, no, let's just fight it out. She wisely denies this offer, and this is very smart since all season we've seen how Matt and Rob have been getting closer and closer, and at the end here, they're literally hand in hand. Rob is out. Jenna, take a step down. You have the most important immunity. Rob drops and Jenna wins her fourth immunity of the season, guaranteeing her a spot at final tribal. She votes out Rob. And while this is the, the smart move, it doesn't completely fall in line with what she said earlier about not wanting to be with someone who's easily beatable at final tribal, which Matt between him and Rob is definitely shown to be the easier one. Rob, the tribe has spoken. Welcome to your final tribal council. It is time. Final Tribal Council. Jenna is going in as the favorite, but will the jury respect her game and value her higher than Matt, who has also had a lot of immunity wins and has made some moves at the end? Let's find out. Jenna opens up in lackluster fashion. She doesn't talk about her gameplay or why she should win. In fact, she says that she believes no one on the jury will change their minds at this point. While this may be mostly true, we have seen in seasons past where a vote or two has been changed or could have been changed based on what's said at Final Tribal. Even if Jenna believes this to be true, she should have her foot smashed on the pedal here at the end, making sure that Matt has no chance of recovering and possibly winning. I feel like I've played this game morally, and that means a lot to me. And so I feel like you'll make the right decisions, so I'm just gonna end it right there. Butch is the first juror to ask a question, and he wants to know if either of them has lied to anyone in the game. Jenna admits to lying to Dina, which seems to satisfy Butch. However, he votes for Matt, proving Jenna's earlier point. She never had a shot at his vote since we had seen him and Matt close all game. Jenna. Yes, I did lie to Dina when she asked me if who I was voting for that night at Tribal Council and I was voting for her and I did not tell her I was voting for her. Rob is next and he asked them to say why the person they are sitting next to does not deserve to be in the final two. Jenna says Matt did not play the entire time and just tagged along. She says he doesn't need the money and doesn't care about this game. The first half of her answer is good and we know how much Rob values gameplay, especially in this season. However, the argument for whether someone needs money or not is not a factor here for him. However, Rob does vote for Jenna. I don't think Matthew has played the game from the beginning. I think he took the opportunity to tag along at the end of an alliance. Um, he doesn't need the money. 
Alex is third and he asks, what was your biggest regret in this game? Jenna says hers was being too trusting. Kind of an underwhelming answer since she doesn't give any specific examples. However, she had a tight bond with Alex until he was voted out. So this vote was going her way no matter what. I think my biggest regret looking back in this game is putting a little bit too much trust in people that I couldn't trust. Heidi is next, and she asks a question in the same vein as Rob's. She wants to know if there's anyone on the jury who's more deserving than either of them at Final Two. We're a part of the jury and we're deciding your fate. I'd like to know if there is a particular person here that would be more deserving to be in your position. And they both say Rob. I would say that um, I think Rob deserves my seat. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to echo Matt and say Rob. Heidi then presses the issue to the point that Jeff tells her to sit down. I think that, is that the only person? I think they covered it. Okay. Yeah. Heidi votes for Jenna, and there was never a doubt about that since they were good friends the whole game. Dina is fifth, and she brings up how Jenna said Matt doesn't need the money and asks her if mm, should votes be based on need and not gameplay. Jenna says if she was the juror, then, she, then yes, it's exactly how she would vote. This is a terrible answer based on how Dina just got done phrasing her question. However, she does vote for Jenna. I think that need should come into it because that's just personally how I would go about voting if I was on the jury. I know everybody's different, but that's personally how I feel I would do it. Christy is sixth and asked Jenna about her comment at the earlier tribal where she claimed that she has to work twice as hard as everyone else to get to where she is. And Christy claims that Jenna Jenna even said that she has a handicap. She said that you had a handicap because you're beautiful. And I am sitting there like, hmm, how, how is that a handicap? Now, actually, Rob said that. And so Jenna is now addressing a quote she never said. However, Christy doesn't care and gets on to Jenna about this. And Jenna tries to explain and gives a non-apology apology. It was just a lose-lose situation from the start. She does get Christy's vote, though. And that's what I meant by handicap. I'm sorry if you were offended. Dave is last and asks, what modern leader do each of them emulate? And Jenna says her mom, which is probably the perfect answer for her, as everyone knows her mom is currently suffering through cancer. She gets Dave's vote as well. That person that I do emulate, I think, is my mom. I mean, I emulate my mom and dad both, and I gain from both, but mostly my mom just because of her fight. Jenna closes Final Tribal by thanking the jury for poking and prodding her. She says she worked hard at camp and at the challenges. She claims her winning immunities at the end saved her butt. Now that part is true about the immunities, but we never saw her working hard around camp and in fact we were shown the opposite on multiple occasions. First of all I just want to thank you guys for really poking and prodding with the questions. I still feel like I've put in my you know work at camp and I do feel like I've worked hard at the challenges. It is time to read the votes and the winner of Survivor Amazon. <laughs> Jenna wins six to one, and Jeff is simply blown away by how this happened. How did a spoiled 21-year-old swimsuit model get all six votes? Here are the other votes. Jenna, Jenna. So let's break this down. How is Jenna as a character? Jenna comes across like many would expect a stereotypical 21-year-old swimsuit model would. She seems very self-absorbed. However, she does have many moments on the show that make her a valuable character in this season. Her feud with Rob, the fact that she wanted to beat the men just to shut them up, and of course, her and Heidi stripping for peanut butter and chocolate. It was a shame we didn't hear more about her relationship with her mom as the cancer storyline happens for half of an episode and seems to be gone just like that. The extra sympathies for what she was going through would have really helped her story a lot as we saw them purposely make her look worse. Notably, when Matt lambasts her for getting the letter from home by calling her selfish when Matt really had no place in saying anything. Out of 18 character moments shown on the show, six were heroic and 12 were villainous, making Jenna Maraska a villain on Survivor the Amazon. Now, how is Jenna as a strategist? Jenna was shown purposefully to not be the best. The show seemed to take steps to make sure she looked dumb, most notably showing how she calls herself an idiot for not knowing what tree mail meant. Even if she didn't have the best strategical moves until the end, it was clear that her social game was excellent as she seemed to never be targeted until the very end when she won immunities to get to the end. Being only the second winner to do so, she was usually in the majority alliance and never seemed to be on the outs until Heidi was voted out at final five. Out of 52 strategic moments shown on the show, 
33 were smart, and 19 were dumb, making Jenna Maraska a smart strategist on Survivor the Amazon. Next time on Once Upon an Island, we will be reviewing the entire season of Survivor the Amazon. Thank you for watching, and if you like the content you see here, then please support me and this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes this channel possible, so thank you for watching. The winner of Survivor Amazon. <laughs> <laughs>